Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Get rid of the victim mentality. Believe the word. Let go of what lies behind and press on to the good things that are ahead. The first scripture that I want to use is the King James translation, which I normally use the Amplified Bible, but it's 2 Corinthians 11, 3. And this is what it says. Paul said, but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Can anybody agree that life has gotten pretty complicated today? <laughs> Amen? Somebody said to me a couple months ago, somebody that's been in church for many, many, many years, was going through a real struggle in her life, and she said, she said, don't you think that being a Christian is really, really hard? And I said, no. Now, there would have been a time when I would have said yes. But it was before I really learned how to come to Christ simply as a little child. I tell you what, you can complicate this thing and it can be a nightmare for you and some of you will never make it. You'll be one of the ones that'll backslide. But if you learn how to stay in the simplicity of Christ, just like when I was talking to people about receiving Christ earlier and I said, The Bible never tells us to try to get saved. It says, to as many as received him, gave he power to become the sons of God. You see, there's a whole world of difference between getting and receiving. The word get means to obtain by struggle and effort. So we say, did you get your healing? Did you get your breakthrough? Did you get the Holy Ghost? Did you get a touch from God? Did you get a word from God? And that puts us in that works mode. But to receive means to become a receptacle and take in what's being offered. Now, I like that. So we, serving God is not complicated. We are complicated. <laughs> and we complicate it. And I was an extremely complicated person, very complicated. And I mean, if anything was simple, I could complicate it and it didn't take me very long to do it. And if you've heard much of my teaching, you've probably heard some of my funny stories about how even if we would try to have company, going to have a simple get together hot dogs, hamburgers, potato chips, pork and beans, iced tea. I mean, you give me a week, I could turn that into a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, we had to clean the house and paint the barbecue pit and plant flowers and get new lawn furniture and the hamburgers became steaks we couldn't afford. And the potato chips became potato salad. And by the time everybody came, I was mad. I didn't want them there. I mean, I was upset because now I had to do all this work so all these people could come and sit around and just mess my house up. <laughs> I mean, I, that's absolutely the truth. What? Well, you know, now I'm mad at everyone. I'm mad at Dave because he didn't help me. <laughs> He's out playing golf on Saturday, having a good time, and I'm trying to get ready for this big party that we got to have. And, oh, I'm so thankful that I've learned and am still learning to keep things simple. If we let our walk with Christ get complicated, then it's never going to work. So Luke 18, 17 tells us how we've got to do it. And it says, truly I say to you, whoever does not accept and receive and welcome the kingdom of God like a little child, like a little child, We need to be reminded of this tonight. Like a little child. Now, look at what the scripture says. It says, shall in no way enter in. 
Truly I say to you, whoever does not accept and receive and welcome the kingdom of God like a little child does, shall not in any way enter it at all. Now, I don't believe that means that if you're complicated, you can't go to heaven. But what I believe that means is that there is a life for us, a kingdom life. But the only way that we can enter into that life is if we continue to enter daily as little children. You know, there's one really cool thing about little children. They pretty much believe what you tell them. They just believe what you tell them. And so, the simplicity of the Christian life is just so simple that it just goes over our head. It's just, read the book. <laughs> believe it do it and it works but oh no no we got to figure it out and dissect it and make doctrines out of it and just you know argue about it and on and on and on we got to have 500 denominations because we can't all agree on what it says and, you know all that silliness and uh it's just simple. Jesus said, trust me, I'll take care of it. Don't waste your life worrying today because tomorrow you'll have something else to worry about anyway, so why spend a day worrying about tomorrow? Simple. Cast your care on me, you can't take care of it anyway, I'll take care of it. Now, there's a benefit to having a few years on you. Actually, getting a little bit older is kind of cool, you know. I'm, I'm not old, I'm mature. <laughs> we don't, we're, we're trying not to use the old word. But there are some really, really cool things that happen because the longer you live, the more experience you get. And see, like, I pretty much know now that it just absolutely really doesn't do any good to worry because it's just not going to change a thing. All it's going to do is give you a stomach ache, a headache, a backache, make you not be able to sleep good, and it won't fix anything. It won't change anything. It won't move God. It won't solve the problem. It doesn't get more hair on your head. don't make you any taller. Nothing. And you know, in trying to teach people not to worry, I've pretty much come to the conclusion that I can tell them, but most people are just going to have to do it until they get fed up with it. <laughs> Honestly. Sometimes our only answer is just, just keep going around the stupid same mountain until you just get so dizzy, you finally just say, I can't live like this anymore. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Hallelujah. The only way you can ever do good in a marriage because your chances are you're married to somebody that's just total opposite of you. I think God thinks that's funny, you know? Yeah. Here, I'm going to put you with somebody that's the polar opposite of you, and <laughs> I expect you to get along. I love that scripture. And a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. It sounds so like cool, but it's the becoming is the problem. It's like, <laughs> it takes years to do that. But you know what? When you've tried long enough to change somebody and it just ain't working, you do finally give it up. And it's amazing when you just give it up and say, you know what, that's just the way they are. And that's just the way they're going to be. And praise the Lord, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it anymore because i got my own issues. And I'm just going to be happy in God. I'm just telling you, if you're married to somebody that's not like you and then you've got three or four kids and they're all not like you, just give it up. Just let everybody off the potter's wheel. You're not the potter. 
and just go be a happy camper and if you want to change somebody work with God to change you come on somebody give God praise So, you know, those are just a couple of little simple examples of how we can just make this so much better just by simplifying the whole deal. Christianity should not be hard. And it never has to be with the right approach. You need to believe the Word of God. And I'm going to talk about this quite a bit this weekend, so you better make your mind up now. You're not going to get bored with it. Because we hear the word, 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 be in the word, be in the word, study the word, the word, the word. Well, you're going to hear it more. Because here's what happens to us. Sometimes we hear something so much that we're not even paying attention to it anymore. And sometimes it's like some of the most important things we need to hear, but because we've become so accustomed to it, it's like, yeah, I know, study the word, study the word, study the word. We're going to talk about that more tomorrow. But I just simply want to tell you regarding the Word of God, you have to believe it above your feelings. Let me just ask you, are you going to believe the God of the Bible? Or are you going to let your feelings be a God to you and bow down to them? I feel, I feel, I don't feel, I feel, I feel, I don't feel. You have to believe it above your thoughts. If your thoughts don't agree with the Word of God, then your thoughts are wrong. You have to believe it above what other people say. What have people said about you? Well, my father told me for 40 years I was no good. Well, he was wrong. Very simple. You don't have to get all out of shape mentally about that anymore. If daddy told you you were no good, he was wrong. And God is right. Hallelujah. Isn't that simple? But I feel, I feel, I feel. Well, you can forget that too. Feelings are important. There's no doubt about it, but we can't let them rule us. And I'm not trying to be cute or funny. I mean, I've applied this in my life, and I know. I mean, I had a mess, man. I mean, I was messed up. I was sexually abused for 15 years. I was messed up. And I'm telling you that this will heal your life. It will heal your life. John 8, 31, 32 tells us that we're free in Christ. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, live, dwell, remain in the word of God. Not read a couple of little sentences every morning just to put in your time with God. Hear a 20-minute sermon on Sunday morning and think that that's going to, well, you've done your little bit. I mean, you will live in disaster. The devil's alive and well on planet earth, and he's mean, and he can't stand anybody that's trying to serve God. If you abide in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And I love this. And you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Doesn't get any better than that. Verse 36. So if the Son liberates you and makes you free, then you are really, truly and unquestionably free. You say, well, you know, I keep hearing I'm free, I'm free, but I got all these bondages in my life. And I sure don't feel free. Well, you know what? It's because you still believe what you feel more than you believe. I mean, it's, and you say, it can't be that simple. It is that simple. You know, I'm not against counseling if you feel like you need counseling, but I'll tell you what, I, I hate to see somebody spend their whole life in recovery. You don't have to do that. You can be set free. Free. Get some counseling if that's what you need. But then get it and go on and become a counselor. Don't just stay the victim all your life. Don't just, 
You know, if you need prayer, get prayer, but don't always be in the prayer line. You know, have a few prayer lines. Pray for somebody else. Don't get rid of the victim mentality. Believe the Word. Let go of what lies behind and press on to the good things that are ahead. You're forgiven, a brand new creature in Christ. Well, I don't feel like it. And when I say that, you know, I'm not trying to make fun of how anybody feels, but I'm just trying to portray really how foolish it is to spend your whole life believing your feelings when they are the most unreliable, fanatical, fickle, almost crazy. You can feel a thousand ways in 30 days about the same thing. There are thousands of people in this city that plan to come to this conference right up until an hour before it started and I don't feel like going. <laughs> and God had something wonderful for them. There are probably people who murmur and grumble and complain about their lot in life all the time and they say they're looking for answers. But they didn't feel like coming. They didn't feel like it. People don't keep their word. They don't keep commitments. They sign up, and when it's time to show up, they don't feel like it. They don't feel like it. Well, you know, maybe I didn't feel like coming this weekend. Maybe I would have rather stayed home with an ice bag on my back. But you know what? You become a man or a woman of your word, and you watch how God blesses your life. Amen? You can't live by how you feel. Well, if you're free, when we say you're free in Christ, free from what and free to what? You don't just get free from things, you are free to do things. Amen? You're free to step out and try something new and don't have to care even one little bit if you're wrong. You say, what? Well, if your heart's right and you really believe that God's leading you to try something and you step out and try it and find out you were wrong, if you really know who you are in Christ, that doesn't make you one bit of difference because that doesn't alter your who. It only has something to do with your do. We just, I'm telling you what, in the Western culture, we are just like crazy about the do thing. I think this little devil sits on our shoulder all day. Well, what are you going to do? 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 <laughs> so one of the things you're free from in Christ is people pleasing. <laughs> Come on now, that's better than that. <laughs> one of the things we're free to do is say no. <laughs> and not even have to explain it all the time. Now, what do you mean, no? Why not? Because I just don't feel like that's what I'm supposed to do. And we need to give people the liberty to do that. If you know somebody and you ask them to do something and they say to you, you know, I can't even explain it, but I just don't feel like that's what I'm supposed to do, you need to say, I respect your right to do that and I support you in your decision. Don't be trying to talk them into doing what you would like them to do because all that is is selfishness. Amen? We're free from the power of sin. Not, that doesn't mean that we never sin, but we're free from the power of sin, the Bible says in Romans 6. And I believe the power of sin is shame and guilt. You say, you mean that we can sin and not feel guilty? I mean that you can sin, you'll be convicted by the Holy Ghost probably before you ever get finished with the sin. He probably tried to convict you before you started it, but, and you can admit it, you can repent, you can be sorry, God will forgive you, and the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. But the only way you're going to give, live like that is if you study what the Word says about it until you just about stare the words off the pages. I'm going to share some really good things tomorrow about the power that's in the Word. And I hope every one of you will come and just listen 
very intently because we do not really, really know how to respect and appreciate what's in here like we should. Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. You're free from the fear of man. Free from the tyranny of their rejection, their judgments, their criticism, and their misunderstandings. I tell you what, when you're doing something like what I'm doing, and it doesn't have to be this, I mean, it can be a lot of things, but you know, when you're doing something that's different than what everybody else is doing, they just don't get you. You know, I am not a regular woman, but that doesn't mean. <laughs> you see Dave put his hand up yeah well you ain't so normal either otherwise you couldn't stand being married to me you know wh what is a regular woman I mean the devil just pestered me with that years ago well you're not normal you're not normal you're not a normal woman so I took a year and tried to be a normal woman and I tried to make my husband's clothes and I tried to grow some garden stuff and Oh my gosh, I was unhappy. Oh, I was so miserable. I hated the sewing machine. I hated the garden. I hated the tomatoes. <laughs> so I learned trying to be what the world says is regular doesn't work either if that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're free to enjoy life, free to enjoy God, free to enjoy yourself. Oh my gosh, the world is full of people who do not like themselves. Get a grip tonight and make peace with yourself. You are never going to get away from you. <laughs> Everywhere you go, there you are. So you have to decide to like yourself. <laughs> well, isn't that right? When you go home tonight, there you'll be. <laughs> I mean, if you don't like me, you can get away from me, but you can't get away from you. You wake up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom, there you are. How wonderful it is to like yourself, to appreciate yourself, to love yourself, not in a selfish, self-centered way, but in a balanced way. You're free from self-hatred and self-rejection and self-doubt. <laughs> I got one happy camper out there. Hey, I ain't had a laughing spirit for a while. I wouldn't mind one of them. I'm, I'm ready for a good laugh. Think about it. Think about how pathetically below our rights and privileges as a child of God that we live. Is there anything in this book that ever tells you to dislike yourself? Or to be against yourself or to hate yourself or to even dislike any part of you? The Bible says that God did farm you in your mother's womb with his very own hand, intricately and curiously. And boy, David, King David, he had nerve. He was talking about what God had created him to be. And then he said, wonderful are your works, O God, that my soul knows very well. I mean, after all that, then he said, and by the way, I'm a pretty wonderful guy. Amen? I mean, I've been crucified in the newspapers for standing in the pulpit and saying, I like myself. Meyer likes herself, the article said. <laughs> yeah, Meyer says she likes herself. But now see, they would have probably thought it was wonderful if I would have said, I hate and despise my wretched self. 
Well, I would if I was looking at myself in myself, but I'm not looking at myself in myself because I am not in myself anymore. I am in Christ and He is in me. You know, when we choose to receive Christ as our Savior, we make a decision to follow Him. That means that our freedom has been bought and paid for in Him. John 8, 36 says, So if the Son liberates you, makes you free men, then you are really and unquestionably free. We're free from the power of sin. We're free from the fear of man. And we are free to enjoy our lives, ourselves, and God. This is really, really important for you to understand.